Hello there. My name is Peter Thompson and this is one of my teaching DVDs and this one is about how Gary Wilson Home went from plus one handicap in 1992, that's a fantastic handicap by the way, down to plus 5.5, almost plus 6 in the year 2001. His philosophy was get the swing right. My philosophy is get the swing right. But Gary was of plus one, which is a superb handicap. But I th knew that even though he was off that sort of handicap, there were lots of things in the swing that could make him even better. And that's what we worked on. You'd be quite surprised when I show you his swing, how nearly all the shots have been hit into a net, not down the driving range, only into a net. I wanted to know, and Gary wanted to know, how the swing was looking and knowing where the ball was going to go isn't that important, it's knowing what to do to make it go there. That's important. Other people who adopt that philosophy of getting the swing right and not worrying too much where the ball goes have been Wayne Riley, he's won the Australian Open, I taught him for a while. Robert Lee, he won the Portuguese Open taught him for a while, and Jeremy Robinson and Lee James are both from the Kenyan Open, all hitting golf balls into a net. Th think about this. In a golf shot, there are three basic elements. One is the direction, but the direction of the shot is sorted out by how we stand. Let's just go further down here. By how we stand. If the stance is good, you'll probably find the shot will be good. The distance the ball goes is controlled by the club itself. So you choose the club to give you the distance. So before you even start the swing, the direction and the distance is all sorted. The third element is hitting the ball. Hitting the ball is 75% stance, 95% backswing, and then 5% hitting the ball. So try and think of the distance from the club, the direction from your stance, getting the stance right and the backspin right, then just hitting the ball. It'll work. I promise you it'll work. Let's go look at Gary's swing now. From his very first lesson. And this is Gary's first ever swing in 1992, hitting golf balls off a mat into a net in a cow barn. That actually is a cow barn. I bought a farm more than 20 years ago and I converted the whole thing to a very good golf course and whilst I was doing that I gave lessons in a cow barn. This is a cow barn. And this will show you how Gary changed his swing from this angle. I'm going to draw two lines, one inside the right heel and another one vertical line in the middle of the left shoe. And all my lessons are based on a few basic principles and two of them you will see on the screen. Number one on the left hand picture, first ever swing, first lesson, never, never hadn't seen a swing before.
and this is many years later and you will see the right hip is now on the left hand picture a long way out side of the right line of the uh, vertical line and on the right hand picture his right hip is inside the line I call that outside inside so the outside of your right hip is inside your right heel if you look at top tip number one on my site you will see this working perfectly so basic principle hip should be inside the heel isn't on the left is on the right which then gives anybody a problem coming down on the down swing watch the, the right heel compared to the vertical line at the end of the swing the right heel is actually still behind the line and the weight is back and the toe is angled backwards because this back swing is so much better we can now shift left and turn round and the right heel now is maybe nine inches in front of the line this one's more than four inches behind the line difference of more than 12 inches and the weight is entirely on the left side in the right hand picture but not in the left so which one do you think is going to produce better goal shots the one on the left with the hip sway the one on the right with the hip turn the one on the right driving forward turning round one on the left hardly turning round at all and staying back wait end of the swing on the back leg the one on the right is going to work better and it clearly did we will now look at this swing from down the line I'm going to measure the angle of where Gary's toes are pointing and that's going about two degrees to the left I will then measure the angle of where the toes are going on the right and that's on the left should I say and that's going about 30 degrees to the right so the difference of more than 30 degrees so the one on the left toes pointing a bit to the left of the target and the one on the left, the toes are pointing a long, long way to the right of the target and that makes it really difficult, almost impossible to swing the club properly down the line also, on the left hand picture the knee down to the ground should be vertical which it isn't and on the right hand picture, the knee down to the ground is vertical so two very important elements there, knee down to the ground needs to be vertical and your toes should point never to the right unless you want to play the ball the draw of course but Gary was trying to hit the ball straight or pretty straight with the fade on the end which is quite tricky with a close stance and the stance then creates another problem which is this in the first move back there isn't a one piece takeaway the arms move away from the body the wrists start to hinge and the body turns on the right hand side you'll find a perfect example of this there's a nice little gap between the hands and the chest club head nicely outside this line on the left hand picture because of the close stance and the bent knees we now get the shaft more or less on this line the hands are on the line, the heads on the line a perfect example of a one piece takeaway but it's not going to work properly 
You do not want a one piece takeaway. Check in my Mr. Bow series about a one piece takeaway. So we want the arms to move away from the chest and the wrist to hinge. And we've now got a gap in here. And now there's no gap at all. Again, look where the shaft is. Shaft over the elbow, shaft towards the top of the arm. If the first move is wrong, then you'll struggle like mad. And if the stance is wrong, you will not get the first movement right. Almost impossible. Okay, my principle is get the stance right. 75% of the shot. If anybody came to me for a lesson with that stance, I would say, fine, I'll give you a lesson, but we need to hit the ball with a 30-yard draw. Do you want to do that? And the answer is, no, I don't. So then we just change the feet. Your feet, you're in contact with the ground, and if they're in the wrong place, big, big problem. So you may well be asking yourself, where's the magic secret? Plus one, two, plus five. There isn't one. There just isn't one. One of my pupils has gone down from 23 down to one in about three years. It's down to 17. There's no secret. Grip, stance, ball position, posture. Get all that right, the rest follows on. Another lady, she's gone down from 36 down to 17 in 15 months and she's been playing golf two and a half years I taught her and her husband and her son her son just got down to two and there's no secret there really isn't legs, feet, ball position, posture all of that is the important thing how do you hit the ball? that way with your feet pointing that way. You could hit it that way, fine. Hit it that way, and then whip your hands around and draw it back 30 yards. I don't see many good golfers doing that. I see lots standing like that. This way. The lady I mentioned just now, she has her toes pointing quite a long way to the left, and people say to her that her toes are very open, and she just says, okay, that's fine. My toes are open and I've just lost 17 shots off my handicap. Toes, point left, knee down to the ground, vertical. There's a good top tip on the YouTube channel about hiding the socks. It's just simple, or showing the socks, sock, should I say. If you bend your knees forward, you can't see your feet. Put your knees back until you can see your socks. There. And that means your knee down to the ground is more or less vertical. Bending forward is not an option. What's, what happens to the distance from the ball? Knee to the ground, vertical, bend my knees, further and further and further away. That's good. Further away. So plus one, plus five by getting the basic Stance right. Gary struggled like mad with the hip sway. Remember the first swing, first lesson in the cow barn? Hips going sideways. Struggled for years trying to stop that. Never really stopped it. We just got it better and better and better. If your hips move a long way sideways, then the club goes back in the wrong direction and he waits in the wrong place. Help me dress the ball, get the outside of your hip inside your heel and then just turn the hip around. Turn, turn, turn. So I hope you've learned from this about there not being a secret at all. In fact Gary used to imagine he's played golf all over the world 
and he would imagine wherever he was playing, he was standing on this mat, which is a fantastic philosophy because now the direction taken care of by the stance, distance taken care of by the club, and the actual shot taken care of by getting the swing right from the good stance. So if he's playing golf at Augusta or in China or anywhere else, he would still be standing on the mat. Somebody else I teach does the same thing. He's just got down to plus three and he imagines he's standing on the mat and then gets the swing right and then the shot follows on from the swing. I'm going to show you one more shot of Gary. This is when Tiger Woods was an amateur. This is in 1997 and Gary was playing for GB and I and he played in the first day singles against Tiger Woods who was then an amateur who just won I think the American Junior Championships for three years on the trot followed by the American Amateur for three years on the trot. So he's a phenomenal good golfer. In fact, he hit the ball 80 yards past Gary. 80 yards. All the drives way past. But crucially, Gary hit all of his drives straight. Beat him by one hole. And there's Gary. Shaking hands with Tiger. And Tiger wasn't happy. I was. Gary was. Great Britain and Ireland were. Because so we went on to win the match, which was fantastic. Yeah, it was a good day. I enjoyed that. I think it rained, actually. Yeah, it did rain, but I still enjoyed it. So that's how Gary got down to plus five and became the best English amateur golfer has ever lived. And one of my proudest days in golf, well I had quite a lot but this is one of them, in the year 2007, 23rd of May, Gary was given an MBE, a medal of the British Empire by the Queen of England. And there's the medal and that was a fantastic day. Get this thing to stay straight. That's better. Good for today. Eh? I enjoyed that day. And that's the story of Gary. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you check out my site about all the different DVDs on the various things I've mentioned. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much.